Good evening everybody and welcome to our Hair Brand Live Takeover. We are Slate Hair Education and this is a very exciting evening for us because it's our first Hair Brand Live Takeover that we're doing in our new academy. Yeah. This is Michael Pizzolidis, What's up guys? Creative Director and he's going to be doing something that looks very interesting for us tonight. <clears throat> it is indeed. So we have the beautiful Petra here and as James Akers said we're in a beautiful new Slate Academy here in central London. Thank you everyone for tuning in. So on the beautiful Petra, we had a very interesting haircut that was already underneath this. So it's got a lot of short pieces, it's got a lot of things going on, but as the night goes on, I'm going to explain to you everything. But fundamentally, what we've done is we've separated two sections to just behind the ear. We've separated a lovely little piece here, which we're going to do something really interesting and a little bit arty for you later with. We've got a section here which comes into a little bit of a V in the back. So it's a little bit of a point and it connects to these two corners we have here as well. We've got a really kind of quite harsh hairline that we're going to have a play with. So we've got the same thing on the other side, a little bit here that we're going to do something a bit fun with later. So we'll show you guys all about that as well. And then fundamentally we just have two sections sitting on the top as well place where the natural parting is. So what you're going to see from this guys, you're going to see this lovely short piece coming around here, a little bit of length here, some graduation coming in, again a little bit of length short, and the top is going to sit over and sweep off the face. How's that sound Petra? Good? I like that. Petra said, well I asked Petra what we should do and she said we can do anything. So. <laughs> Let's see if she regrets it by the end of the day. <laughs> Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my graduation in the back. And as I said, this graduation is going to come in tight. And we're going to scissor over the comb and take these sides in really tight as well. So I'm just going to work through first. What I'm doing is I'm taking from the crown area all the way down. And I'm going to start working through my graduation as well. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. So I think what's going to be quite nice as well is having that hair all clipped off of Petra's face, mm. it's going to be quite cool to see how she looks without any hair on the face yeah. and how she's going to look at the end of the hair dry. I think it's going to be really great. You know, obviously what we did was we did a really good analysis before we started. You know, we kind of had a, a good look at what the hair was saying, where it was sitting naturally, which is why I've placed the sectioning where it is because I'm really trying to work with the bone structure and with the previous haircut you know there's no point in having a good idea and then realizing halfway through the haircut you ain't got the length to do it which is what would have happened if I didn't check through this hair because we've got some short pieces so what I'm doing here guys is I'm working from the top and I'm working with my fingers pointing down it's always easier to work with your fingers pointing down because you can really see how tight you're going to end up with the graduation now for us, we know that we want to go really tight at the bottom, so it means my fingers really have to point into the nape line to make sure that 100% I'm going to hit that mark and we're going to go really nice and tight in the back. Perfect. Cool. So again, just pop your chin down a little bit. What we're doing is we're working our way all the way from the top down. So this is just the first section which goes all the way from the top of the head all the way down to the nape line as well. So each time just picking up another consistent little piece of hair and just connecting it into what we've already done and creating that nice tight graduation at the bottom. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be coming back in and tightening it even more at the end because we're going to do some nice little scissor over comb there. But that's our first section done in the middle and that's our little guideline already. So what we have is we have the weight line at the top and we have the outline at the bottom. So you can see from that first section we've really created our first step of our graduation. What I'm going to be doing from here is I'm going to be pivoting around because I want to create a little bit more length from behind the ear here. So I'm going to be working through in a little pivot. So what I'm doing is I'm creating more length as I get towards the sides. Beautiful. Would you have changed the the choice of length or the technique depending on the shape of the bone structure at the back of the head. Yeah, definitely. Because I think the problem is most people, when they cut hair, they don't think like a colorist. And what colorists do is they always check the undertone of the hair before they put a color on. And I think it should be the exact same when you're a cutter. If the head sticks out more, maybe you're going to have to do something a little bit flatter to get the result you want. If the head's really flat, 
maybe you have to really make the hair stick out more, so you need to go for heavier graduation. So what the end result will look like will be directly related to the bone structure underneath. Just like when you do a color, the end result will always be affected by what you had before. So I think for us, we always look at the bone structure, the density of the hair, what's the previous haircut, to understand ourselves what we can create. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we work with the limitations of physics. We work with the limitations of what we have. So we always have to check what they are before we start. I hope that makes sense. That makes perfect sense to me, guys. Let us know. Let us know where you're tuning in from. It's great to see some regular people watching us. I want to say hi to Stavros and Carlo. Hi, Maria. Um, hi, Laura. How are we doing, guys? Thanks for watching this evening. So good to hear from you guys. Yeah, it's been an amazing thing. You know, we're coming up to our May, which will be our two-year anniversary of Monthly Hairbrain Lives. So we're really looking forward to it. We're going to do a massive giveaway then for our London Academy. So we're really excited, guys. It's been fantastic. And as James says, we, know, we always want to hear from you guys, where you guys are tuning in for, what you guys are up to, what you think of the haircut. And most importantly, if you have any questions for me, you know, I love answering questions. I'm a real hair nerd at heart, so just fire them away, man, and I'd, be, I'd love to uh, hear from you guys. Also, guys, if you like what you're seeing, then please like and share the video, leave us a comment. We really appreciate it. So we've got a couple of questions coming in, Michael. Yeah, I love them. Uh, okay, so I don't know where this is, and I don't think I'm going to know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, Marianne, but hi from <coughs> Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? No idea, sorry. Okay, sorry, right. but uh, she's asking, is your guideline from the top? So what I've done is my first section in the middle was my first guideline. So when I started the haircut, I had no guideline apart from the idea that I had in my head. So what I always do, guys, is whenever I start a haircut, is I always imagine what it's going to look like before I start. And then afterwards, I create a road map within my sectioning. So I knew that I wanted to create something nice and fitted in here that comes tight into the neck. So the way I did this was I started with the first section, and I pulled it out. And what I did was I saw the length that I had at the top, and that was really a guide for me, my first guide of where I'm gonna have the weight. So when you pull the hair out at the top of the head, if you drop your fingers, you can see where the weight is gonna sit, and you have to be happy with that before you cut it. And I think we've had a good comment. What's going on, James? <laughs> it's Cat Stevens. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get that a lot. He's actually my uncle, if anyone uh, didn't know that. Um, but yeah, good old uncle. So some more, some more questions coming in. Sorry if I don't pronounce this right as well, but Mercy, I think, said, Hi, Michael, what will be the difference if you don't pivot? Are you pivoting at the moment? Yeah, uh, so I am pivoting, and it's a really good question. You know, if I didn't pivot and I took vertical sections, it wouldn't end up longer in the corners behind the ear. I'm going to say that again. When I pivot, what I'm doing is as I go each section round, can you see the distance between the ears? Every time I pivot round, can you see the distance between the top of the head and the distance between the ears? It's extended, there's more length. So by pivoting round, what I'm doing is I'm creating more length behind the ears. If I was to just take vertical sections, I would end up most likely taking it more square or actually even rounding it even more. But what I'm trying to do is the opposite. I'm trying to create more length here in the corners. So that's why I'm pivoting and that would be the difference. Let us know if that makes sense. Give us a thumbs up if it does. Great we question. really appreciate it. Good question. We like this. Keep it coming, guys. Uh, so we've got a couple more coming in. So yeah. first of all, the type of comb. Yeah, so this is a YS Park. It's with numbers on it, guys. That's cool, right? That's cool. That's cool. You can look smart to all your clients. <laughs> Um, another question, are you following the shape of the head or going back to your first guide? So I'm following my first guide, you know, the guide was dictated by the shape of the head. So I had decided before I started how heavy or how flat I wanted the graduation. And thereafterwards, I'm following that original guideline, which gives me this nice shape that I'm going for, this nice weight that we have here at the top of the head as well. So what I'm doing is I'm working with that, but I decided that from the bone structure. Now, if the head stuck out more, I would probably have done something a little bit flatter. And if the head was flatter, I would have done something that stuck out a little bit more. So it's always relative to the head shape. I'm always kind of 
deciding it from the beginning. But it's very hard to change things once you've started. So you have to have a bit of an idea of what kind of lengths you're going for before the scissors touch the head. So it's about coming up with a very clean idea and then just going for it after that. Perfect. And are you using over direction? Um, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, I am slightly over directing more towards the middle because I'm pivoting and I want to keep a little bit more length towards the sides. I am actually using a little bit of over direction towards the back as well. So there is over direction when you're pivoting. Perfect. Cool. So what is important guys is you see here, can you see the top has no hair to cut in it? That's because the top section was a, a little triangle, right, when we did the first one. So the first one is your guideline. Now when you pivot, the top is a stationary guide. It means that you don't cut the top ever again. I have a little joke, thou shall not cut thy guideline. And I think it kind of says it all. So you should always see a little bit of your guideline and then you know that you're hitting the right mark. If you're cutting hair at the top of your fingers, it means you just cut your guideline. So when you do the second side, there will be no balance there. So it's very, very important, guys. You do a guideline for a reason, so keep it. Perfect. Um, sorry, the questions are coming in though, yeah, so which is great, so please keep fast. them coming. Um, so, we've got Mike. First of all, thank you very much for the question, Mike. Which one? Uh, Mike Adam Turpin. Hey Mike, what's up brother? How uh, are you? So Mike said, if you're doing a graduation, would you do the perimeter and cut to it, or do your graduation and clean up the perimeter after? Ah, uh, so two very different ways of doing graduation, but a really great question, Mike. Now, there's a difference here, and the way I like to easily put it is think old school, think new school, right? Every time you go and see a modern hairdressing course or whatever, they always do internally first, and then they carve out the outline at the end. This leaves you a softer result, so it's still kind of like a heavy graduation, but you have this kind of sharp outline that they refine at the end, and what you get is a soft feeling from it. But when you do the outline first, it's always gonna look even stronger. Think 1960s graduated Bob, and then think of a modern graduated Bob. The old school 60s one, they did the outline first, and then they worked internally. And the modern ones work internally first, and then the outline. So if you want something strong, go old school. Do the outline first. If you want something a bit more soft and new school, do the internal first and then work through that perimeter at the end. So thanks for your question, Mike, man. I hope you're well. Always good to hear from you, brother. Great question. Thanks, Mike. Um, David's saying you went up on one side and down on the other side. Yeah. Could that be different? I think what he means with fingers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So definitely um, it's very hard to keep the same angle when you're doing it both with your fingers pointing up and down. My, I find that quite uncomfortable. So what you will always find is one hand you'll have knuckle down, the other one you'll have knuckle up. So that's just a natural body thing that keeps it more comfortable for you. But there is a difference as well, to be honest. Most people who are right-handed will always end up longer on the sorry, yeah, longer on the right-hand side. Now, there's a reason for this. Sorry, I'm very dyslexic, so you have to forgive my left and right confusion. Guys. Come on, I can't be the only dyslexic hairdresser out there. So what happens is, because of the natural way that your fingers move around the head, you're always likely to be shorter on one side than the other. And I'll show you guys why just now when I finish this last bit. So, what happens is, when you work with your knuckles down, as you pivot round, can you see how your knuckles wanna go close? Maybe it's better if you come from the top, Francesco. So, can you see when you work like that, as you turn your fingers round, can you see how close my knuckles are to the head? Right? So when you turn, it's always naturally, your knuckles are close to the head. When you work the other way and you turn your hand, can you see how far that away is, that distance? So you're always gonna be shorter on the side where your knuckles are pointed towards the head and you're always gonna end up longer when your fingers come and point out because they wanna go further away. So everyone normally finds this side go shorter. That's okay, just try and accommodate for it. That's why we do cross checking. All right, speaking of which, I'm gonna wrap through a little cross check at the back before I start coming in tighter on the side. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna push the hair over, come with my comb underneath, and start to clean up the shape from left to right. So, we got any more questions? 
Both oh, of them. yes, we do. By the way, guys, if you do like the answers, give us a thumbs up. If they don't make sense, just comment and just say that to us and we'll try and go over them again. Of course, absolutely. Um, okay, so. Caitlin said, how would you start a cut like this if she had longer hair? Uh, well, I mean, are you talking about doing the same haircut but just she has longer hair? Uh, I presume so. Okay, because if, if it was the same haircut, I would do nothing different. For me, it doesn't matter if I'm cutting off a centimetre or 17 inches. I would do the haircut in the exact same way. You know why? Because it's not what you cut it's what you leave behind. So it doesn't matter if you're cutting off a millimeter or 17 inches, it's not what you're cutting, it's what you're leaving behind that's really important. Perfect, so just choice of length would be different, yeah. The, the, the choice of length would be the same because all I'm doing is just cutting more hair off, if it's the same haircut you're talking about. Oh, I think, I think this, if, if we wanted a similar haircut, but the hair to be longer. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, when I finish this, it's not really possible to do it shorter. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, in theory, just this back bit, you just keep your fingers further away from the head if you want to go for a longer look. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, let us know. Let us know, okay, that answers. Yeah, because that one so. threw me a little bit. I don't know quite exactly what you meant. Cool. So I just did a little cross check from the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross check the corners into the middle as well. Just going to grab some water, guys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do some really tightness in those corners as well. Because I really want to take these bits. Because there's a really strong hairline there. And I just want to kind of whack it off, to be honest. So we've got a question from Sarif as well, yeah, which is a cool. great question. When and why do you decide to pivot on a haircut? So you decide to pivot on a haircut when you want to create a triangular or a round shape. When you want to create a triangular or a round shape. So what I mean is when you want the hair to go shorter in the middle and then come longer on the sides, you can pivot. But also if you go up higher each time, you're going to round it as well. So it's either a rounded or it's a triangular haircut when you pivot. You can't do square with it. Okay. I hope that sense. answers your question. Perfect. Let us know. So about and um, to Leon, that will all become apparent why the why the hair's sectioned out in the corners. You'll see. Yeah, we're well. gonna we're gonna we'll do, do a, a little bit of fun thing. But yeah, you're right. We'll do a little recap in a second, guys. So if you're just tuning in, hold on with us for one minute, and I'll give you a lovely little recap of everything we've done so far as well. Perfect. I love the way that's sitting in. Really yeah, good. it's cool, man. It's getting there nicely, building. Amazing. Beautiful. So, an artist is only as good as his canvas, so thank you, Petrock, for being <laughs> a beautiful canvas for this evening. Cool, so what I'm doing is I'm just cross-checking now from what I had cross-checked already in the center to the corners on the sides. So what that means is we had done our pivot in graduation. We then cross-checked the center, so we worked through the center cross-checking. Now what we're doing is we're cross-checking the sides into that as well. Um, James, can I have a bit of water, please? Thank you so much. So I'm just going to get rid of these fun little bits we're going to leave out for a bit. And we'll explain why we left those out later. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Where is the book? Uh, I think it's there. Okay. Cool. Na, na, na. Little swap skitters. Yeah. Very professional All as right. always. There we go. So we are Slade Hair Education. I'm Michael Pizzolides. This is the gorgeous James Akers. We're in our London Academy, so it's our brand new London Academy space. We've only opened up a month ago. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was the beginning of January. So, so yeah, literally a month we ago. We opened up our new academy one month ago, so we've already done a classes and private courses here. If you guys want to see any of the courses we're doing or any of the Hairbrain Lives we've done in the past, you can go to our Facebook page or our website, the website slatehair.com and our Facebook page is Slate Hair Education and the same on Instagram guys. So if you want to see our videos that we've done over the last two years with Hairbrain or you just want to see the classes we've got coming up at our London Academy, just feel free to go on our website guys at slatehair.com and you can see that. Perfect. Uh, cool. Dennis Deturi is with us. Hey Dennis, what's up? Old um, school so soon. He asked a question. I like questions. Which is, what if you drop the nape out and cut the graduation first? 
Uh, yeah, you can do that for sure. I mean, that's kind of like how we used to do the box bobs, isn't it, really, back in the day? So yeah. it's a really nice technique for like getting your weight lines in, getting everything super refined. So what we'll do, guys, is we'll do a little recap. I'm Michael Pizzolini's. This is James Akers. We have the beautiful Petra with us today. Mm -hmm. Rock and I, we've got Francesco <laughs> behind the scenes. So what we've done is we've understood when I look through this haircut, there's a lot of short pieces, there's a lot of breakage, there's a lot of things going on. But we decided we're gonna go for something really nice and tight across these two sides. We're gonna take this nice graduation that we have in the back. We're gonna take these tight and we're gonna have these bits kind of popping out. So we're doing something quite interesting. Then the top's gonna to come and sweep back so what we did was we took a center section in this first one. We just did our graduation first. What we then did was we pivoted as we wanted to keep a little bit of length on the sides, pivoted around the other way. We cross-checked everything horizontally and then we came and we cross-checked from the corner into the middle. So vertical, pivot. Then what we did was we came through just from the middle. We worked through horizontally, checking our shape. And then what we did was we came from the corners and we checked from the top of the haircut to the middle, from the top of the haircut to the middle, from the top of the haircut to the middle. That's all we've done so far. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start taking in these little bits that we have in the corners a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to take away this bit that we're going to use as a bit of disconnection. And I'm going to start coming in tighter in this nape area, which is a very lovely nape area, but it's just a little bit difficult. <laughs> Do you find um, you always end up cross-checking work? Or do you think it's important to cross-check yeah, the work? Yeah, one hundred percent. So I think it's really, really important to cross-check because at the end of the day, nothing's ever perfect the first time round. You always have to kind of check things to make sure they're really what you want them to be. You know, especially we're humans; we we all make mistakes. So it's very, very important that what you do is when you do your haircut, you're cross-checking it as you're going to make sure that you're creating the shape and the technique that you want, but also. So that you have a balanced shape as well so it's very important from all of those factors perfection shape making sure that you haven't missed bits everything is relative when it comes to cross-checking it's all very important Perfect. cool so have you got any sorry Mark, to yeah, yeah. Just, um, just something that i find a lot when teaching that people struggle with is really in these areas in these right. really tricky areas yeah, yeah, yeah. in the corners that people struggle with their clothing yeah. enough yeah, do you yeah. have any tips for, for these yeah. guys um well the number one tip that i can give anyone is water 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 speaking of which let me find it so water is always going to allow you to have more control so water is the best tool to have control of your look so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the very bottom even if there's no head of cut and I'm going to work through that first then I'm going to work my way up as well so I comb the hair with my comb and what I might do is actually hold it away with my finger I comb it down and I grab it so you can see what I was doing was I was using the comb and then my finger and then the comb as well so it's really using all the tools available, the water, the comb, your fingers, anything that's gonna help you have more control of the haircut. Obviously, when we talk about precision cutting, for me, it's not just cutting a blunt, clean line. It's about really, really actually being able to control the haircut you're creating, whether it's a choppy haircut, whether it's a razor haircut, you know, I would see many razor haircuts and I would call them precision haircuts because people create what they really want to within the haircut. And as soon as you have control and you create what you want to, I like to call those a precision cut. So anyone can do it. So that's just taking it a bit tight. I'm gonna look at that at the end and see if I need to scissor over comb it as well, but it's already sitting a little bit nice. It's pushing everything in for me. So we've got a little bit of that graduation going on as well. We've got the nice little nape area coming in tighter as well. Beautiful. So it's looking good, you know. If you guys do these kinds of haircuts, let us know. Let us know how you would do it as well. We, rem we wanna know what you think. So cool. Guys, let us know where you're tuning in from. Please like and share the video for us. We'd love to try and spread the word and get this out for our education. I think that's the most important part of it. If you have anyone that you think might like to see this or might benefit from it, then please tag them in the, in the comments. Cool. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be taking this area type from really behind the ear to the front of the face. So again, I'm just going to wet it down because water is the key 
to that precision that we're looking for. So I'm going to take my little section. Now there's actually already short hair under there. So if we see, there's already a little bit of short hair here and then the rest of it's long. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with this first bit that's already been cut. It's a bit of an undercut there. And we're going to be taking it even tighter as we go. So if you guys want me to recap, if you're just tuning in, let us know. We'd be more than happy to answer any questions for you guys. So yeah, just let us know where you're tuning in from. We would love to hear it. If you don't know where we are, guys, we're in London. We're at the Slade Hair Education Academy in central London. One minute walk from Oxford Circus. Brand new spanking building. Beautiful. Guys, hi from all over. Hi, hi Marissa from Southern California. Hello, our friend George from, from Athens. How are we doing, dude? Nice. Austin, thank you from Edinburgh, feeling the energy, we're feeling the energy too. <laughs> yeah man, I'm feeling the vibe, now we've got our own little home, now Slade has its own little central London home, we are feeling the vibe, so it's good that George is watching from Greece, we have some great news as well, I'm going to be in Greece on the 16th and 17th of February, doing a sold out class with milkshake hair and armor beauty in Greece. So that's coming up in like a week or two or something. I don't know what date we are, but it's coming up guys. Um, that's really cool. And then we're all back in Athens. The whole team of Slade Hair Education is going to Athens for a really amazing show with Milkshake. That's on the 9th of March. So if you are in Athens on the 9th of March, I will be upset if you don't come and see us and say hello. <laughs> okay, we've got a question from Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Hi, um, Sandra. Would this work for someone with a round face? Uh, yeah, actually it, it would work for someone with a round face. Obviously what you want to do is when you talk about face shapes, you've got to think a little bit about what is going to accentuate these things and what is not going to accentuate these things. So what will make a head shape stick out more or less? And this is very important guys, because what we're doing now is we call this a creative haircut. The reason we call this a creative haircut is because there's disconnection in it. Now when you work with disconnection, it gives you possibilities. Okay, it gives you possibilities to change the face shape. Now obviously Petra has a beautiful face shape. Beautiful face shape. But what happens is you can make a face shape look wider or you can make a face shape look slimmer. Now when you take these sections that we've done up here, the higher you take them, the more likely you are to slim the face. So if you've got a wide face, you're very likely to want to take these sections as high as possible. So you have more chance of slimming the face shape. If you've got someone with a really little petite face, you want to take these sections lower because that's going to make it stick out more. So you are the boss. You can decide if you want it to come higher because you want to slim the face or lower if you want it to stick out as well. So it's really choice of length and choice of where the dick disconnection sits. I almost didn't say that word. <laughs> I don't know what I was about to say, but anyway. Right, so just, hi guys from St. Louis, from Dublin, from Serbia, Malta, Michigan, amazing. all over. Amazing, what's up guys? Thanks so much for tuning in. So, uh, you know, obviously we've got our course coming up. It's on the, when is it? Uh, what's creative? It's, it's in March. It's in March. It's on the 16th and 17th, 16th and 17th of March, March or 15th, yes. something, whatever, guys. So Sunday, Monday. We're Sunday, Monday. We've got, so we've got a, a creative cutting class coming up at our London Academy. Um, I think there's two spaces left, so you know, it'd be great to see anyone who wants to come. If you want to know any more about our education, you can go to slatehair.com or tune in to our social media, Slate Hair Education. James Akers, he does a live once a month for Slate Hair Education some of the best education you'll ever see in your life. So tune in guys, there's all the old videos on our social media as well, so go check them out. James is our cutting director for Slade Hair Education, so he is our number one boy and he's done some unbelievable haircuts for you guys to watch. So if you like the vibe of this, you're gonna love what James does as well. So you can see here we've got that nice little tight graduation coming in, a little bit softness there as well. It's looking really nice. So what we did was we took these vertical, slightly diagonal sections towards the back. We decided the angle of the graduation we were gonna take. And then what we did was we worked through one, two, three, four, five, till we got to the back. So who can answer this question for me? If I took my sections vertically, in what way should I cross check? Let's see who can answer that one. Answer's coming in. Yeah? <laughs> I like it. Okay. 
So uh, while, while you guys are thinking about that and answering, um, just quickly touching on the courses that we've run so far. So we, we, we tend to split our geometric courses into three different categories. So we work two day courses and we cover three haircuts in each. So we have Slant, which we ran in January, which we were sold out for, which was great. That was our first course here. And then I believe it's uh, Sunday, Monday coming up, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, It's the next one, which is our flow course, which is um, all about round shapes, which we'll be running, which we're also sold out for, yeah. which is really exciting. We've got um, Maggie coming over as well from Guernsey to do a one-to-one -one with me for two days while that's going on. So we've got a super busy, super exciting time. So yeah, we do, we're running courses, we're holding courses every month here. So if you, if you are interested at all, just please just give us an email, or contact us through our social media and we'll be able to let you know a little bit more about those. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's a huge thing that everyone's really into now is this kind of like personal private education as well. And we've got a great space here where we have a lot of salon owners that would rather not kind of be in a group class that are a little bit more advanced, that want to take that time, you know, to get really one-to-one -one personalized bespoke courses. So something we're really, really into ourselves as well. So just coming back to the haircut, guys, what I'm doing is I'm doing the same on the second side. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going from a graduation, so I'm going from higher in the top of the head towards lower at the bottom of the head. I'm building the head shape, so I'm actually making the head shape stick out a little bit more, but because I've taken my section quite high, I'm not creating it that much, so I'm not making the face look wider than it already is because of my sectioning. So when you want to do a creative haircut, it's so important to understand the bone structure and where your disconnection goes and what it will do to the head shape. That is super super important because it's not just about what you're cutting it's the suitability of it as well and learning what's going to work best to tailor make a haircut completely and when you work with disconnection there's just an infinite amount of possibilities so really you have to start thinking a lot about what you're doing to make sure those possibilities are really being captured and used in the right way as well but cool I think your questions are going to have to get harder because everyone wrote right Horizontally. Yes, um, so I have a question for you guys then as well. I like that. So if I am checking horizontally, what am I checking? Good Let's see if anyone can answer really that one. Um, so Austin has come up with a, an amazing question because... Ooh, I like it. Um, Thanks, Austin. Thank you so much, Austin, for watching as well. He said, when you work creatively, how much is it planned out? And how much is left to see how it develops? Um, so I would say there should be a 98% already mapped out in your mind. 98%. I think really when it's dry and you start to kind of point into it a bit and soften areas, that's when the personalizing and that kind of thing comes off. I always try and map out a haircut as much as I can before I start. I think a lot of hairdressers get lost. And so what I try and do is I always try and visualize it. And the good thing about hairdressing is what we do is we do something which is so visual in cutting. You know, in coloring, you kind of color it and then you wait half an hour and see what turns up. At least that's how it works for me because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but, you know, obviously what happens when you're cutting is as you're cutting, you can see the shape forming around the head. You can see how it's building. And before you even start, you can do the same. So what I was doing with Petra was I was moving the hair around. I was seeing what suits her. I was looking at how the hair was falling on her face and what worked and what didn't. I was moving the hair more on the face, more off the face, higher, lower, to try and understand the bone structure. You know, we decided against round shapes because we felt like the bone structure was a bit strong for that. It was too square, it would accentuate it. So we're really personalizing it to what we can see with our own eyes work. So it's very visual. So if you take the hair away and you hide it like this and she looks better, great. If it doesn't, put it back, you don't <laughs> cut it. And that I think is just number one. It's just really have a look and take that time before you start to roadmap it out. So what am I checking here, guys? So if you cut vertically and so I cut my graduation. Got your answer. Huh? Yeah? Vasilis has got your answer for you. Ah, good old Vasilis. Is that Vasilis from Greece? I believe so, yes. Yeah, what's up, Vasili? Good man. <laughs> You've been paying attention in class. I like it. So. So 
What's the answer? So the answer is we are checking our shape because essentially what happens is when you're cutting from top to bottom, you're creating your graduation. So when I'm coming this way, I'm creating my graduation. So what happens is when I cut vertically like this, I have a really nice clean graduation because I can literally see it with my fingers. What happens though is sometimes the over direction is not great. So your shape is not really that perfect. So what happens is we come and we cross check horizontally because we want to make sure that that shape that we're building is just spot on. And so we're just dusting it to make sure that it's really clean and it's spot on. I've got a couple of people asking the same question here. Yeah, I like um, it. Good. I'll, I'll talk to so that from Kimberley. Um, yeah. I always find cutting one side of the front much harder than the other. Worried about my angle being out or not quite right, usually my left side. Any tips? Yeah, of course. I think whichever side you start with, right, you have to then be very, very careful whenever you do the second side. So for me, I have a chance of going too short on any side. Doesn't matter. Because always, once you've cut one side, you have to mirror it with the second side. So what I always say is go slow, go with caution. Go slow, go with caution and measure. So if you've done one side, take a minute, measure the distance from the top. You know, you don't have to buy my fancy comb that has numbers on it, but you're more than welcome. <laughs> measure the distance from the top, measure the distance from the bottom, measure the distance from the front, measure the distance from the back. And once you've done that, you can go to the second side and work with an accuracy. Why? Because you've taken 30 seconds to check what you've just cut to make sure that when you do the second side, it's not going to be affected. Now, what I also like to do is I also like to go, whenever I'm doing the second side, first section, I always go a little bit longer than I think. So I have a chance of going back and taking it shorter if it has to. If you go too short on your second side, can I say you're fucked on this <laughs> yeah, you're fucked. So you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to cut the first side you've just done again. So you really have to make sure that when you're doing the second side, you're going slowly, you're going with caution. Okay? I think for me sometimes as well, just going into that first section and feeling it with your fingers and picking it up how you cut it, almost just before you go into that other side almost gives you like a muscle memory of, mm. of where you've been. You know, I always have this little tick that I do. Tick, trick, 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 trick. trick, trick. trick. So I, I'll show you this, guys. This is my little secret, yeah? You each have to send me one euro, okay? So <laughs> what we do is I take a section. I'm not giving it the middle finger, I promise. Okay, we're just pulling the hair over. And what I do is you can look at my fingers at the bottom. This is a measuring stick. I'm measuring how far my hand is from her head shape. So what happens is I remember the distance between my finger touching the skin and the top of my hand as well. And so what I do is when I come to the second side, I have that muscle memory and I make sure that the distance is the same. So I feel that the distance is the same that I've just created. Okay, so I'm using my fingers as a measuring. If you like to cut with your hand closed, that's cool. Just open your fingers, touch the skin, and when you're about to cut the hair, close your hand and just go for it. All right, so that is my number one top tip. That's a great trick. Let us know what you think, guys. Let us know if you use any of those or if you have any tricks yourself that you find to help you. Yeah, we're loving the questions, guys, so thanks so much, everyone. And if you are enjoying this, Please, we really appreciate it if you'd like and share this. Send it to your friend, send it to your nan. It's fine, everyone will love it. I bet you the Americans don't know what a nan is. But anyway, <laughs> moving on. So, what we've done, I'm gonna give you a lovely little recap. So, this is the beautiful Petra. I'm Michael, this is the stunning James. We're here from Slate Hair Education. Can we get a zoom in, please? There we go. So. We are here at the brand new London Slate Hair Education Academy, and what we're doing today is a lovely little quirky creative haircut for you. So what we've done is we started from the back. We took a section in the back which comes into a V, okay, and it extends across the side. So we have this first section, 
which is a little bit of a V, and then it extends on both sides. We work through a pivoting graduation first, so we graduate it and then we pivot it around. So the corners here are longer than the center. So what we did was we did a little pivot as we worked our way around. So we've got this nice little graduation, which is sitting here. We came tighter in the nape, and then what we did was we came tighter in the corners, just here, so because we want to leave a little creative bit, we want to leave this kind of looser bit of long hair out the bottom. So what we did was we came shorter and tighter underneath, shorter and tighter here with our graduation, and we left those fun little bits for later. What we then did was we took these kind of diagonal sections, we came in and we started to cut, and we cut it from shorter in the top, short, shorter, Shorter in the bottom, longer in the top. Sorry guys, just a little glitch there. It happens on Windows. So anyway, moving on. We then took, I think if I move over Francesco, you can probably see this better. So what we did was we worked a little diagonally. So there we go. We went nice and longer on top and we went shorter in the bottom because we wanted to build out the head shape a bit there. But what we're doing is we were also looking at the bone structure. You know, we wanted to go for something that was a little more slimming, hence why we went for something a little bit higher with our partings because remember guys the higher you go with your partings the more slimmer it is the lower you go with your initial partings the more heavier it is and this is all part of understanding how to do a creative haircut cool so now we're coming to a fun bit where we're going to start connecting the top to the back so i'm just going to clip away one side and i'm going to start on the long side first and now i'm not worried about what happens underneath here because actually this is so short it's not going to affect what I'm doing at the top. If it was long and I was going to get lost in my sectioning I would put a clip in for safety but because I know that it's so short I'm not going to get a problem with it we're just going to work through the top now. So I'm just putting water now why do you guys think it's important to use water? Do you guys use water? Do you guys like to do dry haircuts? Let us know what you think and we'll give you a shout out and we'll hear Perfect. Cool. cool. So what's made you want to start on the, on the, the wider side? Right. I think also because this is the most um, important because you have the fringe area. So for me, a lot of this haircut's feature, so the real kick with this haircut is going to be the fringe area. So that's why I want to start with that hard bit first. I want to make sure that that is pristine before I move on to anything else. So whenever I do haircuts, guys, I kind of go, what's hardest? And I start there. Yeah. Whichever bit it makes me scared and makes me want to go there first. So if they say it's the length in the front, I'll start at the front. If it's making that really nice graduation, I'll start with the graduation. So one reason why I'm starting at the front here and not at the back is because I really want to save this length here. So that's why I'm really making sure that I'm going to work from the front and I'm saving that length. I've seen a lot of people over the years, you know, kind of start from the back and by the time they get to the front, they realize that they've cut it off. So really important, hardest bit first, straight in there, straight away, I can just calm down knowing that we've hit the right point. Nice. So from the front here, I wanna save the length and the outline. So we're gonna leave that drop out. We're gonna cut from there onwards. But how do you know what angle to do here? Well, that's really easy. Remember how I said in cutting, you can see it? Well, if I pick up this hair that I've already cut in the back, guess what? I can see it. So that's how I know where I'm going to connect it to. So I, I lift it up again, I point my fingers a little bit more down, I want to make sure that I'm hitting the mark, I'm going to lift them up slightly, making sure that I'm hitting the right mark, and that's my guideline. So I'm going from the hardest part on the front, connecting to what we have in the back. All right, so if that makes sense, guys, let us know, give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Perfect, I think that's, Really, when you, when you understand hair cutting, that allows you to kind of start wherever you want on the head, doesn't it? hundred percent. You know, uh, our founder and mentor of Slate, Gregory, you know, always told me from day one, he goes, you can start a haircut anywhere and it will work. Because as long as you understand what you're creating, it doesn't matter where you start it from. There's always a way, and it's so right. It doesn't matter what haircut you're doing, you could start it anywhere. If you understand truly what the technique is, what the shape is, you can start a haircut anywhere as well. And he used to do it to me. When I started training with him, he would just pick up some random pieces of hair and start cutting them off and go connect it and walk away. It was really <laughs> nice of him as well. I think the models loved it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Cool. Like that. Amazing. So we really appreciate the questions, guys. So keep them coming. 
you know, it can be anything. There's no such thing as a stupid question, only a stupid answer. So if anyone says anything stupid, it's gonna be me. So you don't have to worry. So what I'm doing is I'm just following my guideline at the moment. I'm actually kind of pulling the hair towards the previous at the moment. I wanna make sure that I have a chance to save a bit of hair within the outlines here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be working a little bit back just for safety. And then what I'll do is I'll cross check horizontally and decide whether I like the corner or not most likely I will take it off because I always feel like when you have these kinds of shapes if you leave too much weight at the bottom so if you leave too much weight here it doesn't flow nicely it, it's too heavy so what I'll be doing is I'm pulling it for a bit of safety but I'm going to come back horizontally and I'm going to round that corner off afterwards as well is there any reason why you decided to stand on that side of the head as opposed to the other? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, because I'm trying to pull the head more towards uh, the first section, which is on this side, that's why I'm staying on this side, because it's much easier to pull the head towards myself. Now, if I was trying to do a rounded shape, what I would be doing is I would be standing on the other side, because again, you have a tendency to pull the hair towards yourself. So you'll have a tendency to round it more. So it's all about over direction. It's all about your body and where the comb is going. Because the comb really always wants to come towards your body. It likes your body. But anyway, moving on quickly from that comment. <laughs> so I'm gonna say hi Andrea from Kitchener, hi Mary from London. Hi, Mary. Thanks for joining us guys. We'll do a recap shortly yeah. so you know where we are. So I'll just finish off this last two sections I have here and then I'll do a recap before I come back horizontally and start really rounding this corner off that I've created here. So we're just again following the guide all the way to the back working slowly but consistently towards the back you know taking enough hair that it works in my fingers i've got my guideline i'm cutting the right place because i'm cutting towards my knuckles as well so we don't get no finger marks in it or anything like that beautiful color by the way from francesco he's not just a good videographer he's also a good colorist as well so big love to francesco for doing that for us it looks great so what i'm doing is i'm just connecting the top now to the back so that graduation is just going to blend all the way from the front to the back this will be my last section and then I'm going to do a recap and then I'm going to actually come and cut off this corner that I've just created. But it's always easier to be a little bit safer. You know, people sometimes say to me like, oh, a corner's bad. No, corners are not bad. It just depends on what you're trying to create. If you're trying to create something that has structure to it in the square as an example you need the corners curly hair very important you need the corners you know when the hair's fine you need corners so corners are not always a bad thing it just depends on what you're using it for cool i'm michael Fitzsilies. this is james acres we're here from slade hair education Cool, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little recap for you now. So you guys, if you're just tuning in, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. So we have the beautiful Petra with us today, who's an amazing model. She said we can do whatever we want, so we're about to find out if she's happy she said that or not. <laughs> what we've done is we've actually started from the back. Let's move a little bit out of the way so you can see here. We started from the back. We took a center section from the back, a little bit triangular, and we pivoted from the back all the way around one side and pivoted from the back all the way around the other side. Now what we have is we have two pieces that are cut out here. So we've actually taken two sections here, just have to find them again for you. And we've actually left this bit long because we're gonna have a little bit of fun with that later. The hair underneath has a very, very strong hairline. So we just worked it through our fingers, taking it quite nice and tight as we did as well. But then that little fun bit we'll talk about later. After that, we have the top sectioned off and we work through the underneath here. So what we did with the underneath is we took slightly diagonal sections and we worked through a lovely bit of graduation as we worked through, as we worked through lovely little bit of graduation. So we have this super cool tight graduation. We have this lovely graduation that sticks out in the back and this soft little bit that we're gonna play with later as well. So it's looking cool. We then took the top and what we wanted to do was we wanted to keep this lovely little sweepy fringe that Petra has. So she came in with this really nice kind of sweepy fringe that she has naturally. It's how it sits every day. So we want something that's gonna work with her everyday look. So what we then did was we took the front to the back and we actually came then vertically and we connected from the front all the way 
to the back, all the way to the back. What we did was we brought all the hair and we connected to the back. Now I'm going to cross check because it's too heavy on the sides here. And so I'm going to come back. I'm going to remove the corner that we've created here as well. If that makes sense, give us a thumbs up. If it doesn't, let us know. We'll recap it as well. If you have any questions, let us know. Perfect. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, please, please, please share this video. We really appreciate it so much. If you've been watching for this long, go for it. Perfect. Thank you, friends. Let's see. Pop it down. <laughs> pop it down. Hit that share button. So, what we're doing is we're coming over, and what we're doing is we're rounding it now. But also, this is related to the length you're going to see in the outline. So, I don't want lots of hair kind of falling off. It's going to sweep off the face. So, when I come and I bring my hands over, I'm not just randomly cutting. I'm actually visualizing where the hair is going to fall, and I can do an amazing thing where I just let it fall and then I see where it's going to fall. So once I'm happy with that length, I've checked that it's going to hit the right point, I come back, I get my tension in, I can then start cutting it in. Now what I've done is, because I've cut something here and I've cut something here, can anyone guess what you find in the middle? A corner. So what we're going to do is, once we've done the top and we've done where we want the outline to sit, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to slim that corner afterwards. The amazing thing about understanding what you're doing is you know where everything is. I know where the corners are. I'm going to decide if I want to keep them. I'm going to decide if I want to remove them. I'm not confused of where it is. I'm not confused about what I'm doing. So that is an amazing thing. When you have that kind of understanding of hair, you can go through these haircuts with a lot of confidence. And if you see something's wrong, you know where it comes from. I'm not going to question where the weight is. I know where it is because I created it there on purpose. So it's a beautiful, beautiful kind of way of working like this. Quite precise, you know, with a lot of thought gone into it. Beautiful, we've got some, um, some nice comments. Oh, um, thank you. Andrea said, a baby stylist, so a young stylist, I think. He said, this can't make so much more sense than what she's been told so far. Amazing. Melody said, it's a super technical, but playful at the same time, yeah. how it work. Thank um, you. <laughs> Now, Caroline said, do you always cut with the client's part sectioned versus a main section? So I assume she means like a whole show. Yeah, I, I, it does depend. It does really depend. So if I was doing, um, let's say, what I would define as round graduation, I would actually separate the top from the bottom and then bring in the parting. But that's because I understand where the parting is going to go afterwards. Especially for these types of haircuts, you know, you really do want to think about where it's going to fall before you start because you don't want to be left afterwards thinking where the hair is going to fall and what you're going to do that's why we said we kind of really map this haircut out before we started it as well so i think it's really important if you're not going to actually section off the parting you should 100 percent know before you start where it's going to fall maybe there's no parting maybe it all blends nicely maybe there's no need for it you know that is completely your choice but you do have to have an understanding and idea before you start i think the worst thing is to start going through a haircut and not know what it's going to look like at the end it's kind of a little recipe for disaster that one yeah <laughs> that's when you kind of see most hairdressers you know when they kind of spend a good 10 15 minutes at the end personalizing it they're just trying to make it look better you know, at the end of the day, because they didn't cut the initial shape right. So what would you say the most important thing is? What do you, what do you aim to, to give people from your education? Michael? Well, from the education, it's just a better understanding. You know, I know what it feels like to struggle doing hair. You know, I'm not going to pretend and say I was always good at cutting hair. I was probably the worst in my school for sure. You know, so I think when you don't find it easy, it's very easy to teach people because you have a very good understanding of what they're going through. You know, I used to very struggle and I used to think about, um, oh, it's right here. We used to think about, you know, the haircuts that I did when I used to go home at night. So I used to go home after work and just sit there and think about what I did and was it good enough and how could I do it better and what should I change. And you know, that really took over my life to the point where I didn't really want to be a hairdresser anymore. You know, I thought if I don't want to, if I can't be good at this, I don't want to do it at all. And so what happens is with education, it gave me the freedom to earn money, have a career, travel the world, have my own company. So I think education for me is one of the most beautiful gifts you can have. And so being fortunate enough to do it every day for people, um, you know, I'm in heaven, so 
I think that's what it's about for me. Amazing. If that makes sense. So what we're doing is we're again looking at the front not to cut it off. We want to connect it to the back. So by lifting the hair up, what we're doing is we're checking where the back is and how well it's going to connect. So once we're happy with that, we work through taking the neck section up as well. So encompassing a little bit more hair this time, lifting the hair up. And at this point, it's very important to keep checking. People really make mistakes when they think they've kind of got it and they stop checking. It's really important to check every single time. Only when you have the guideline in your fingers, so like that, I can see the guideline in the back. That's when you don't have to check when it's already in your fingers. So apart from that, it's very important whenever you're lifting up the hair to check that you're going in the right direction. So it's not only what you're cutting, guys, it's where you're going. So it's not what you cut, it's what you leave behind. It's not what you're cutting, it's where you're going. These are some of the mantras of Slade Hair Education. I think it's really important. Um, mm. I think, you know, as well, uh, we've just got a comment which I'll read out in a minute, but, um, you know, we, we, we practice a lot. I think that's really important for us, you know, to, to carry on evolving, you know, with, with the people that we teach as well. Um, Morgan said, I struggle with short hair and tend to stick with long hair and I just need the confidence. That's it. And I think that, you know, you need to, you need to practice, you need to try. And education is one of those things that can give you that confidence and yeah. it means a lot to us. You know, I think the thing is, obviously, there's a lot you can learn on your own. It just takes longer. You know, for me, I was very, very fortunate to have such good mentors and such good teachers throughout my life. You know, and I worked really hard to work with them as well, but they really allowed me to understand things much quicker. You know, so practice makes permanent, but at the end of the day, if no one shows you how to do it, then you're kind of guessing, which is why watching these kinds of videos is so important. And even for us as teachers, you know, we really have to teach to learn more. You know, the more we teach, the more we learn. The more you guys ask me questions, the more I learn. So ask me some questions, guys. <laughs> Okay, so you're repeating now, removing that corner exactly. on this side. So yeah. now I'm repeating, removing the corner on this side. So I did the same thing. I connected the top to the bottom. So sorry, connected the front to the back. Now what I'm doing is I'm removing the corner from here so that we don't have that weight anymore. So I can see where it's sitting as well. And then what I'll do is afterwards I'll come back and I'll start to look at that corner that I just created and see if A, I like it, or B, I don't like it. What do corners do? So corners are weight. That's all you have to think about. Corners are weight. Corners create weight. They create the bone structure to stick out more. So if you want to create a shape, a specific shape, you know, you're probably going to have to work with some form of corners. People don't realize things like a round line has corners in it. Who would have thought? You know, <laughs> that's the thing that people have to understand is it's not always a bad thing. It's not always just a square haircut. You know, yeah. so it very much depends on what you're creating, whether those corners are going to be useful to you or not. So if I left the corners now, what they're doing is they're pushing Petra's head upwards. So they're pushing it up like that. If you want something that's just going to flow a little bit softer around the side, that's where we have to go in and slightly slim those corners down. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Although there's, there, as we started, we have so many sections and now everything's just looking like it's really flowing beautifully. Exactly. I mean, the beautiful thing is obviously what you should never lose focus of when you have so many sections is your end result. It's what it's going to look like at the end. You know, a lot of people do that where they take so many sections, they kind of lose the flow of it or they lose the connection or they lose about the bone structure. For us, we've always got that in our mind before we start. Now, you can see I'm removing the corner, but it's a very, very subtle corner. It's a cheeky little corner, this one. It's just a little bit, you know. But what's happening is we're not cutting it off a lot. We're just cutting it a little bit off. You know, we're just slimming it, just rounding the corner off. We're not removing the corner, we're rounding the corner off as well. So I'll do the same on the other side. So guys, here's a question. If you just pull out a corner and chop it off, what do you get? If you can answer that, let us know. <laughs> James is answering that one. <laughs> Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a secret before I do this next bit. Is it's how to really get the sweepy fringe 
more sweepy, really pushing off the face. So we've we've done competitions before on this, you know, and, and we had uh, Maria won. She won and she came and did a two-day class with us in our London Academy. You know, that was our first student we had here. And the question we asked was, what does short hair do to long hair? So can anyone answer that? What does short hair do to long hair? Perfect. And if you write your answer, you also have to write where you're from and what the weather's like where you are. <laughs> And if it's nice, I'm coming to visit you, yeah? Because <laughs> it's horrible in England. Anyway, moving on. Um, Morgan has a question, which is, how long... Well, first of all, what size are your scissors? Nice. Scissors, right? Yeah, yes. Okay. Scissors. scissors. So my scissors are quite small. Um, they're about, <laughs> they're about 4.5. They're a bit like nail cutters, to be honest. But I find they're the most precise out of all. Um, you know, I really feel that you know, when your scissors are too long, you lose the control. You yeah. lose the ability to really define what it is. You know, if you can imagine, if you have this and you lift it up a little bit, you can see that it's moving about a millimeter. I want you guys to imagine this stick is a mile long. What happens if I go up a little bit? By the end, it's gone up a kilometer. So what happens is your scissors, the more you move them up or down, the longer they are, the more they go up and down. So you have less control. So smaller scissors, easier to get in the head shape, more control. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my secret and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing. So what I'm doing here is I'm lifting the hair up and in the front of my fingers, I have the front of the hair and in the back of my fingers, I have the back of the hair. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this over the front, right? Now, can you see that the hair at the back is traveling to reach the same place? And in the front, I only have the front. So what happens is when I cut this now, it's gonna be creating the front to be shorter and the back to be longer. And what does short hair do to long hair? Did anyone answer that right? A lot of people. A lot of people, good, I like short that. Short hair so pushes the long hair. So you're all gonna know that short hair pushes long hair. So what I did was I lifted the hair up so I've got just the front in the front of my fingers. I pulled it over and when I cut it, what I did was I created it shorter in the front, longer in the back. And so that's just going to sweep off the flace. Flace? 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 The flace, beautifully. Yeah, man. That's how we do it down under. <laughs> Come on, James. Let's have the best Australian accent. We've got Genevieve actually watching from Australia saying hey, that's best for short hair cutting. Thank you. Amazing guys, thanks so much for tuning in, we really appreciate it, like I said we've been doing this for just over a year and a half now, you know, in, uh, in, in uh, April, April, April yeah. will be actually our two year anniversary of doing Monthly Hair Brain Live, so all of you that tune in every month, we super appreciate it, it's our first Hair Brain Live in our new London Academy, which is one minute from Oxford Circus, we're super happy to be here guys, and we're super happy that you tuned in. So, I'm going to do a little recap for you guys, and then I'm going to start to blow dry. So I'm just going to move it away. So, cool. Thanks so much, James. There we go. There's a lot, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> so, those of you that didn't see how much hair we had in the beginning, it was about down to here. When we started, you won't believe it. It was super long. So, as soon as the video finishes, go back to the beginning and check out. I'm joking, you're going to hate me. It was already short, but it, we definitely cut a lot off. So, what we did was there was a lot of sectioning going on, there was a lot of different things happening. So, what I want to do is I want to talk you through how we did this, right? So, first of all, the beautiful Petra. Oh. So nice. <laughs> we have the beautiful James. Before you guys comment, we know that he needs a haircut. Before you say, I need a haircut, I just had one. Come on. <laughs> so, what we did was, we started from the back. We took a section which came from the crown area across, and it came into a point into the back. What we did was when we came across and it came into a point in the back, we did a nice little pivoting section. The pivoting section worked from the length we wanted to create at the roundness of the head, so how much we wanted the head shape to stick out, and we went right into the nape line and pivoted round. After that, we had a little section underneath here, and we came in finger length and we connected it in. So this hair is a real pain in the... Um, neck. neck, pain in the neck. <laughs> so it's a pain in the neck. So what we did was we took it nice and tight and we just pushed over to the side. What we then had was we had these creative little pieces that we left long as well, sticking out. Um, and we had the top sectioned off. 
right? So you can see underneath is this lovely little tight undercut, which goes in a graduated angle. So it comes and it goes longer in the top, shorter in the bottom. I can do this. <laughs> and then we worked all the way. And it's still about just behind the ear. That's where we kind of have the long bit. So this is just a nice little short piece that comes a little peekaboo there. Um, what we then did was the same on the second side. So it has the same feature on the other side. It has that little undercut, which comes into a nice little soft piece there as well. So that's looking really beautiful. What we then did was we took the length at the front. We didn't actually remove any length at the front because Petra already had this when she came in. And we then connected from the front all the way to what we did at the back. So we lifted the hair up. We lifted the hair in the back that we had already cut in our first pivot. And we, does anyone else watch Friends with pivot? Anyway, so <laughs> just, we connected from the front all the way to the back. And he, every time I say the word, I think about yeah. it. So, <laughs> so we from the front, if you guys seen that, if anyone's watched Friends and knows what I'm talking about with Pivot, let me know. So whenever you come up, you're pointing towards the back and you're connecting it in each time. And what we then did was we worked through one side, we worked through the second side, we came in and we took the length off the bottom, so we connected it to the outline at the bottom. And then what we did was we just rounded that corner through. So by rounding the corner through, it just made it a bit softer and a bit more sweeping back. I think it's about come to that time where we dry the hair. I think it is great. I think it's important as well for us to to let everyone watching know that that these the disconnected areas is our flavour. So I mean, if you didn't want that, you could do the same thing without these little areas. It's not always about you can adapt these things to to how you want them to look. So I think it's really important as well to rem to remember that. We're just adding, adding a bit of Michael into this haircut. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I think it's a bit of James, to be honest. I love the rough. I think, you know, James has done a really, really amazing, what number was it? What Slate Life did you do that amazing haircut? Hairbrain posted it on their Instagram, which is super sweet of them. It was an amazing haircut. I don't know what number it was, but if you go on our Facebook page, Slate Hair Education, we're tagged up there. So if you go on Slate Hair Education's Facebook page, and then you can check out all of James's live videos. So we have a playlist called Slate Live, and James does all of them. I managed to do one, but that's it. Anyway, <laughs> they never let me on again after that. That's fine. <laughs> Forgive them. So what I've done is I've just added a little bit of product to it, and we're going to start working through a little bit of a wrap dry now. Cool. Sarif, I think you're right. I think a wave would look beautiful on the model, but I think that that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I think we're Yeah. Well, we'll see how much time is, we have at the end, That's you know? your, that's your vibe, I, I, isn't yeah, it? I, I'm quite good at finger waves, to be honest. Michael is a very oh. good finger wave, I have to say myself. Not, not so much me. <laughs> there you go. Finger um, alright, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. It's a good one. It's a good oh, one. Good. Sorry. <laughs> so what I'm using is I'm just using a vent brush because I don't want to completely kill the texture of the hair tonight. I just want to leave it a little bit softer. So I'm just going with a vent brush. I've got no nozzle on, only because I can't find the nozzle. And I took the <laughs> That's right. Cool. So just doing a little bit of a soft one. Um, and also guys, what we're going to do is as soon as we're finished doing this wrap dry, I'm going to do a full little recap again. And if we have time, I'll even do a finger wave. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have any jam? Uh, um, let me have a look too. I think we do, yeah. Let's see. So Francesco, come a little bit closer. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get the air to go into the roots a little bit more than anything. I'm just encouraging the air to go into the roots. So the vent brush is just moving away the hair now. That's all. Because it has less tension. What other brushes do you use and 
Yeah, so uh, we have a vest brush. So a vest brush, let's see the vest brush. So they come in black and black and black. Um, and what we do is those ones give a lot more tension. So if you want more of a tension dry, sorry, that's probably better. If you want more of a tension dry, if you want to make the hair more smooth, more straight, you're better off to use more of a vest brush like the ones you see here. If you want something a little bit more soft, a bit more natural, you're better off to use what we call a vent brush. Why? Right? Because it has vents in it. That's why. I don't know why that's called a vest brush. Anyway. Uh, there we go. So what we're doing is it depends on the end result we want. Obviously we all know that we can use round brushes and all this kind of stuff. If we really want to smooth the hair, if we want to create a curl, all those kinds of things. Paddle brushes are great for doing straight hair, longer hair as well. So it's really up to, I'm moving the hair forwards as well over the face because I just want it to fall a bit more naturally and curl over the face. So you kind of have to encourage it to go a bit forward in order for it to do that. So it doesn't just sit off the face. You know, not over the face, if that makes sense. Right. But really, you want the haircut to do the full thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool, really nice. Guys, let us know what you think. Do you like working on these long bleached textures? Do you find it more challenging or do you find it easier? Also, no one's answered my question yet of what do you get if you chop off a corner? So, we'll see, you think. It's because they don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know either. Okay, cool. So, it might be a little bit too volumous here, but let's see what we've got to play with. And I just might need that again in a sec, James. No the way there. Just having a little look. That's looking cool. That's it's a bit back. That's nice. These bits are just playing out. I already put a lot of that in. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll find out. Cool. Yeah, that's looking nice. So now it's just a little bit more detailing, to be honest. Can I just have that for a second? Absolutely. Thank you. Ooh. All right. So let me grab some scissors. Morgan. Yes. Freeman's watcher. Huh? <laughs> Morgan Guy, yeah, you've got it. So you cut off a corner. This is when Michael was talking earlier about whether he pulls out a corner and cuts it, he rounds it off as opposed to just cutting it off. If you think about it, if you cut off a corner of a piece of paper, what you end up with is actually two more corners. Okay, so I think when we're looking at taking corners off, it's really important that we work. Normally we work with our fingers very flat when we're cutting. So actually, this is a one time when I would decide to round my fingers slightly to try and carve out the corner as opposed to cut it off. Yeah, That's very great. Very nice, very nice, very well done guys. Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm just refining a little bit, you know, I see that for me it's a little bit weighty in the back here. So what I'm doing is I'm picking up the hair horizontally and I'm actually doing a dust as I go up. I don't know if you can see the tiny little bits of hair that we have, but you know, they're really minuscule amounts. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling out nice bit of tension, start to work it like a scissor over comb and just dusting. And I don't know if you guys can see the quality of the video, but it's a really tiny amount of hair that we're taking off each time. It's a dust. So literally. Michael, I've got a question for you here. I feel like a lot of people would go in here and use pointing yeah. as opposed to this. Why? Yeah. What's the difference and why have you chosen to do so this? So for me, this is not really um, hair that works, looks very clean. It, it won't really sit with a kind of flow to it. And when you point into things, what you tend to do is you tend to make things more choppy actually. So instead of creating a blend, what you create is yes, you create a bit of a visual blend, but actually it kind of looks more sparse and choppy and you're always removing weight so whenever you do those things you're removing weight and so I don't actually want to remove weight at this point you know I like the weight within the haircut I, I think it's heavy and I think it's going to allow um, Petra sorry to uh, to be able to wear her hair more naturally so you know for me that's really important what I'm doing now is I can see that it's still a bit heavy because of this corner. So I'm just creating two more corners. I mean, rounding the corner. <laughs> so yeah, it's, that's the very big difference. You know, for me, I'm still rounding the corner. I'm not removing it completely. It's still a rounded corner there. Beautiful.
shapes looking really great. Right. Beautiful. So guys, we're coming towards the end. If you have any questions, let us know. If you want James' telephone number, just hit the like button and he'll get back to you as soon as possible. It's fine. Beautiful. We have a laugh here, guys. So if you like the fact that we have a bit of fun here, just let us know. Please and like and share the video, guys, as well. We really appreciate you tuning in and spending your evening or morning with us, wherever you're tuning in from. Yeah, yeah. let us know where you're tuning in from, and we want to know if it's morning or night. Do you like to watch us in the morning? Or in the <laughs> Do we put you to sleep? That's the question, basically. <laughs> yeah, I think that's looking really cool, actually. Beautiful. Yeah, so we've got this kind of like interesting shape going on here, guys. It's got that little cheeky little undercut coming through there. You know, the hair's designed to kind of sit back. We've got those little longer pieces in the corners as well. We've got this cool little sweepy fringe, which comes down and sweeps off the face with those cheeky little bits on the other side. You know, we're really playing. I could come in a bit tighter here, just at the very bottom of the nape, just to kind of fade that in, just so you kind of, it, it almost accentuates what's going on on the sides here, I think. That's what I like about it, is that when I do that. So just come a little more back for me. That's another little trick when the head kind of goes back and you work your way up. So that's a nice little blend we got going on as well. I'm liking that. If you're liking it, guys, let us know. Give us a thumbs up as well. Well, Juliana from Hawaii. We'll oh. come there anytime you like, Juliana. No oh. problem. <laughs> We're, we're already booked our flights as we're talking. <laughs> so what I feel is, I feel like it's just a bit heavy, but it's kind of heavy at the bottom. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna come horizontally and just kind of lift the hair up and just dust over the top. And what this is gonna do is it's just gonna create that softer, softer blend from the top to the bottom. You can see that what I'm doing is I've actually changed the way that I hold the hair as well because I'm adapting it for this dry hair now. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing a middle finger with my two fingers together. And what I do is I grab the hair like that. And that is giving me much more tension when I'm working with dry hair. So what I do is I try and change the way I hold the hair when it's dry so I can have a bit more tension. So I can really hold it in my fingers and hold it in place. Really cool. So that's cool, yeah, and that's got an amazing little blend. I don't know, how long have we been on for, guys? Uh, an hour and 15. Okay, Here so it it's time to wrap it up. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, what we'll do is, you know, it, we'll do a little bit of styling, we'll take some pictures. If you guys are nerds, hair nerds, and you want to know more, I've got a little secret for you guys. So, if you tune in to our Slate Hair Education Facebook page, so we've got the link for Slate Hair Education up in the top of the video. We're going to do the head sheets afterwards for you. So if you want to see the head sheets of how we did this haircut step by step, tune in about five minutes after we go live on the Slate Hair Education's Facebook page. Um, let's take this off, Petra, and let's show everyone what we've got here. Maybe a little bit of hairspray, if that's cool. Yeah, there we go. Nice one. Absolutely so, stunning, right? Amazing. So, we have the milkshake hairspray, and we're actually doing a show in March with milkshake. So, if you guys use milkshake, if you like milkshake, if you don't know them, they're amazing products, guys. They're really brilliant. We're doing a show in March with them in Athens. So, if you're in Athens on the 9th of March, I expect to see you there as well. We're just putting in a little bit, just to keep it light, a little bit off the face. It's looking good. How's it looking from your side, James? Stunning. Okay. Really beautiful. I really love this one. Great. There we go. I think it's kind of your vibe, isn't it, as well? Yeah, it is a bit, yeah. <laughs> cool, you see, we, we, we learn from each other here. A little bit of what's <laughs> going on. I love those little cute little bits coming out. Thanks so much to Petra. So guys, give Petra a thumbs up for being an amazing model. She said to us at the beginning, she doesn't care what we do. So uh, <laughs> free it's, a pretty, it's a pretty hairdresser's dream, that one. <laughs> Let's see what she thinks afterwards. So that's looking cool. Beautiful. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of a recap for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for staying with us. If you made it to the end, you have to give it a share. Stand up for me, Petra. Cool. So we just do grand overview there. Thanks, James. So. 
What we did here, guys, was we started off with taking quite a few sections here, okay? We had one in the back of the head, which came from the crown area into a V in the back. We had two little slices here and two points that we left out here as well. We had underneath here a little undercut. If we pick the hair up, we can see it's very short. And what we did was we had undercut here, same on both sides. So what we did was we started from the back, we worked through a center section from the top to the bottom. So we worked through the weight line first and came in tighter in the neck. We pivoted around that top area, which we said was a little V. We then came in and came tighter in the corners here, connecting to the middle. We left these bits out completely. We didn't cut them at all. We came from the top here and we worked through a little bit of graduation all the way to behind the ear. What we then did was we came from the front and we connected all the way to the back, all the way to the back, all the way to both sides. We then came through and took the length off from the sides, from what was left over the top, and then we rounded the corners. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we're going to be live in about five minutes on Slate Hair Education's Facebook page. Thank you, James. Good night from London, and we were here at the Slate Hair Education's brand new academy. If you want to see our courses, go to our website at slatehair.com. Good night, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. So much.